The city called Glimmer that she longed to find, for Glimmer was a place that could only be found in the darkest of times. What a very strange world, she muttered, distracted by the pawing brambles. She held the lamp a little higher. The flame wriggled happily. It would be nice to be in good company, she said, continuing forward. Ramshackled, a little worn down, but all the same, it was home. She liked to float from one realm to the next, for it allowed her to meet the most peculiar of characters. The guardian's eyes watched her warily until she finally rumbled, are you not afraid of monsters? Yes, she replied, perched comfortably in her umbrella. I've heard that all monsters were once children of the light, whose souls were stolen and turned to the dark. Therefore, I am fearful of what made you, but not of you. The snow bears watched silently, heads cocked and intrigued. They were curious, and so was she. I seek freedom, she called to one. Ah, it sighed, so do we. I can only give so much, she whispered. You see, I'm really quite little. I see fire in you, the giant creature rumbled. We are not so different. I am a digital artist, and I was born in South Africa. And so what it means to be a digital artist is that I create all of my artworks on an electronic device. And so for the past three years, this has been my iPad. Now what I'm interested in is a realm of animation called visual development. And what visual development artists do is that they literally develop um, the background, colors, lighting, environment, and props that go into creating the look for a film or animated work. But my journey as an artist didn't start out in digital art, and I actually only started learning the medium about three years ago. Prior to that, I mostly just created pencil and charcoal portraits. But in 2015, I began to experiment with a couple of character doodles of my friends and family. I spent the following year just experimenting with landscapes. And in 2017, that was when I began to incorporate storytelling with my artworks. And to this day, I'm still experimenting because I am self-taught. Everything that I create is heavily reliant on instinct and a gut feeling on what looks and feels good to me. So being self-taught has been a source of insecurity for me, and I remember confiding in a friend that even though I'd been creating digital works for a while now, I still don't quite know what my art style is. He looked at me and responded, you know, Kimothy, I don't think you have an art style. I think your artworks are more about the feelings you have looking at them. And this reminded me of two of my favorite words, which now serve as the soul to my works of which the first one is a Spanish word called duende. Now, when duende is applied to art, it describes the mysterious power that a piece of artwork has to move someone. It is a heightened sense of passion, emotion, and inspiration, and it leaves the viewer feeling naked, vulnerable, and intensely aware of their being. Which brings me to my second word, which is actually a South African word called Ubuntu. I am what I am because of who we all are. And what Ubuntu asserts is that humanity is the quality that we as people owe to each other. And while these two words became a part of my art, it was a result of my own story. To give you a brief idea, up until about the fourth grade, I was a pretty good girl. And then after that, I became my parents' definition of the child from hell. <laughs> I almost got kicked out of school a couple of times, jumped, tucked, and rolled out of a couple of moving cars to escape curfew, spent most of my freshman year in a drunken stupor, failed to get into the design program, got put on academic probation, and I also switched my major four times, which delayed my graduation by two years. 
In 2014, I was diagnosed with major depression, and shortly afterwards, I developed bulimia. During this period, I remember feeling so often very small and very insignificant. I created this artwork to remind myself that in times when I feel that way, I am enough, and no way in hell was I going to let this be my story. This one is about monsters. So you have to understand, bulimia and depression are rooted in a profound sense of self-hatred. I often felt very ugly, both on the inside and on the outside. In creating this, I wanted to show that the monsters that we perceive are actually the ones that we should fear and reject the least. Because in my mind, all that us monsters wanted was to tell our story, and most importantly, to be heard. What you are about to see is my favorite artwork, and it is my depiction of my struggles. You know, when we die, death has a very absolute way of removing everything about you. Your existence, your values, your failed relationships, and all the ridiculous decisions you were ever crazy enough to make. But the only thing you leave behind is what you leave behind in others. Death will never remove the connections you make, no matter how brief or flawed you may think they are. It is that flickering, comforting part of you that will always remain glowing and alive. So take a moment and just fully realize that everyone in this room is just as alive as you are. Your story is your unique thumbprint, and it is always yours to craft. Own your story. Looking at this, you would have probably never known that behind it, there was a scared, hurting, and lonely girl who really just wanted to live without fear. You can never truly know what is going on beneath the surface, but I found my strength in art. And in times when I let fear guide my choices, I ask myself one very simple question. Are you being led by your spirit or your wounds? Thank you. <laughs>